this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to add a footnote and then some examples of the Oscola style of referencing, which is the style that we use in the University of Buckingham School of Law. So to start off with, let's have a look at how we would insert a footnote. I'm on Microsoft Word and I want to insert a footnote, let's say at the end of this sentence. So that's where I will first click. Then I will go to the top of um, my screen. I'll click on references and insert footnote. OK, so that's what I've done here. Then I would add the footnote and whatever I need to write. Um, under this footnote. So that's how to add a footnote. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some examples of styles within Oscola. So to start with, we'll have a think about um, what Oscola is. So o Oscola then, you can find the relevant guides that you need simply by typing Oscola into Google. Um, and actually you can see here Oscola is the Oxford University standard for the citation of legal authorities. Now, if you click on this first link, you'll be brought to the Oscola full guide. And this link brings you to the quick reference guide. And um, so the quick reference guide um, is one page set out here with simply some examples to follow. OK. Um, and the full guide sets out in far more detail exactly what you need to do. OK, um, so let's start by looking at um, cases. OK, so where can I find cases here? Page 13. So let's go to page 13. And look at cases. OK, and the reason I'm starting here is because my first example sentence says the neighbour principle was first set out in Donahue and Stevenson. Now, sometimes in your handouts, um, I draw your attention to um, an example handout here. You might be given the citation number or a citation number. OK, um, so I've actually copied that one already. Um, and I have put that into this footnote, but you'll see I've added an addition here that actually wasn't on the handout. And I'm going to show you how I came about doing that now. OK, so let's have a look at um, page 13 of the full guide. Now, you'll see that we, we have um, two subheadings here. Um, so we have case citations, including neutral citations. And um, so neutral citations, for example, UKHL, that means UK House of Lords. Um, and essentially it's neutral because it just sets out the judgment. OK, um, but uh, what we need to add when we have a neutral citation is a report as well of the judgment. Um, and we can find these by looking on um, Westlaw or LexisNexis, for example. But some cases actually uh, don't have neutral citations. So, for example, Donahue and Stevenson does not have a neutral citation like this. It's a House of Lords case, but it doesn't have a neutral citation. Um, so what we do is we follow this. Um, or uh, here we can see an example. OK, so we would add the name of the case in italics, the citation number, and then in rounded brackets, the the relevant court. OK, so here that's exactly what we've done. Donahue and Stevenson, the name of the case in italics. Then now in normal font, we have the citation number and then we have uh, the the court House of Lords in rounded brackets um, and you can find out which court you need to refer to um, by looking up the case on Westlaw or LexisNexis and it will tell you there. OK, so um, let's look at the second example. Um, here we have a case referred to JD and E Berkshire NHS Trust. 
footnote three. Now footnote three, okay, we can see that actually there is a neutral citation here and therefore we've needed to add in a report as well. Okay, so let's see, how do I go about doing that? I'm going to copy this. Uh, neutral citation. I'm copying the neutral citation because um, that's the one actually I was given in my handout. So let's just have a look for this in the handout. J, D and E. Um, I believe it's this page. OK, so we're given the neutral citation. We're not given the report. So that's for us to find ourselves. Not a problem. So we will go on to um, Westlaw, you'll see I've actually already um, pulled this up, but I'm going to go back to cases search um, and I'm going to find it again. Um, so I'm going to put the citation number that we just copied into Westlaw, search, and then this is the result. Now I'm just going to um, backtrack slightly. Remember when I said when we were looking at Donahue and Stevenson that you would need to look on Westlaw to find out what court you would need to put in your rounded brackets. Here's where you can find it. Okay, House of Lords um, in this instance. Um, so here we're looking at uh, JD and East Berkshire Community Health NHS Trust. OK, so um, we have found the neutral citation. We already knew that from our handout. This is where we can find all our other citations. Now, typically you can refer to one of these, the weekly law reports or the All England reports. OK, here I'm going to refer to the weekly law reports because actually you'll see this has a link that I can read. So it's best to cite the one that you've read. OK, um, so here we can see our citations. Now, um, you'll see actually that in the example that I've given, I copied that out, but there's no um, full stops between the W, the L, the R. OK. Um, and that is for a reason. Um, when you look at the uh, Oscola guide, it says here, there are no full stops in the abbreviations. OK, there is a comma that separates the neutral citation from the report. Um, but Oscola doesn't tend to to like a lot of punctuation. OK, and um, so just pay attention to that within the guide. Uh, and this is something that you will learn and your skills will develop uh, during your time on the programme. OK, so that's an example of how to reference um, your your case. Now, let's say, for example, you needed to reference a particular paragraph. Um, I'm just going to um, to pluck one um, out of the air here. What you would do is you would add a square bracket, let's say we're referring to paragraph 35, 35, and then that paragraph, uh, that square bracket. OK, that's how you would outline a specific paragraph. Now, um, that's cases. I'm now going to show you how you would reference a direct quotation from a journal article. Here we have a quotation, it says, so I've said Lord Atkins research notes set out that in respect of the neighbour principle, I have left the question for others to answer. OK, and I've actually got that quotation from a journal article, this journal article here. Let me show you it on Westlaw. OK, so this is actually the quotation highlighted here that I, I, I've copied. Um, and you'll see in this this green part here, that's from page 447. Now, that's going to be useful to us to know that. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the page where I can find all the information that I'm going to need for my reference. Before I do so, I'm going to cross reference back to the Oscola guide and I'm going to find, here we go, articles. Page 37. Oh, page 37. Here we go. Articles. OK, we have some uh, instructions here, but then we also have some examples. OK, um, now when we look at this uh, journal article, we've got the author. Brilliant. 
uh, the title, we're going to need that. The um, journal that we're using, it's the uh, it's this journal, but it has an abbreviation that we can use here, JURREV. The year that this article was published, 2013, the particular volume or issue, okay, number three, and then this is our page range. Now that's all important information. If we look back here, author, we know that, title in uh, single quotation marks, the year, the type of brackets that we use depend on whether it's followed by a volume. Now, I told you that this is volume three. OK, so excellent. That means that we need to use rounded brackets. And um, then we have the journal name or abbreviation and the first page of the article. OK, so now I'm going to show you how that looks. John Cleefield. Um, and then we have our title in single quotation marks, the year in rounded brackets, the volume number, the journal abbreviation, and the first page. Now, I have used a direct quotation here. Remember, I told you it was page 447. So I need to um, set out that exact page number. And I've done so by separating a comma after the first page to the uh, page number uh, from which I've drawn the, the quotation, okay? And that is simply how you would do that. And I've done that just by referring to the OSCOLA guide. Now, in our final example sentence, you'll see um, I've said, Lord Atkins' research notes during his assignment of the case set out his wider thoughts and considerations, sometimes beyond those seen in the judgment. Now here, this is a, a, a more general statement. I've not used a direct quotation, but my knowledge here is informed from my reading or informed by my reading of that article. Um, and that's where I've got that knowledge, that information from. So even though I've not directly quoted the article, because I have used that to inform my knowledge and to inform this statement, I still need to add a quotation, um, a, a footnote here, sorry. So I've inserted a footnote and then I've added my um, reference to that article. OK, here I'm I don't need to add a particular page number because I'm actually not referring to a particular page here. I'm referring to the research notes in full and they are set out in the article in full. So um, that quote, that reference would be fine. OK, so that's how you would um, add your footnotes and some examples of how to use OSCOLA. OK, and you'll see here that use of Westlaw and Lexis to be able to inform your references is really important.